Today our journey will be to India, to the history of the Babur dynasty. Some of Babur's sons continued what Sultan Babur did, but some of them did the opposite. Due to such mistakes of the sultans, one country but two different faiths were formed in India. It became difficult to know whether the state was Hindu or Muslim. The Indo-Muslim culture emerged in the country. The reason for this is that the Muslim rulers forgot their religion, and were busy with wealth and throne. But someone had to overcome these shortcomings and bring the light of Islam to this country again. These days were long awaited by Muslims. And finally, after several years, that day came. A new ruler has ascended the throne in India. This ruler was accustomed to sleep on hard beds instead of soft beds. Does not like to wear very luxurious clothes. He usually fasted during the day and prayed at night. He ate bread made from barley flour. He was strict follower of Quran and Sunnah. His name was Muhi al-Din Muhammad Aurangzeb Alamgir, who was a descendant of Amir Timur, grandson of Babur Mirza, son of Shah Jahan. The meaning of Aurangzeb is ornament of the throne, and Alamgir is conqueror of the world. He reunited India under a single flag. He redeveloped Islam, which was weakening in the state. His mother Mumtaz Mahal, and his teacher Muhammad Sarhandi played a major role in Sultan's achievement. Muhammad Sarhandi gave him a very good education and always said to Aurangzeb, You are the descendant of Babur. You are the descendant of Timur. You have to save Babari dynasty here. You must preserve Islam here. Sheikh Sarhandi used to pray for Aurangzeb every night. And finally, Aurangzeb became a scholar who studied Islamic jurisprudence, Akita and Tajwid very well. And he also learned how to ride a horse, shoot a bow and fight with a sword. In managing the state, he worked with the advice of scholars. He established the Islamic financial system in the country. He reduced taxes, reformed the army and began to conquer. He fought 30 battles with unsubdued clans and tribes, and participated in 11 of them himself. Muhammad Alamgir gathered the scholars and consulted, and by his order the book Al-Fatawa Al-Alamgiriya was written. This book contained fatwas according to the Hanafi Madhab, and this work is considered one of the most reliable books of the Hanafi Madhab in the world. This book is known in the Middle East and Khorasan as Al-Fatawa Al-Hindia. One day, Aurangzeb heard that one of his governors had made a throne for himself. He immediately called that governor. He was told to demolish the throne and work like ordinary people sitting on the ground. Aurangzeb, who ruled the country for many years, finished memorizing the Koran at the age of 40. Despite many state concerns, he became Hafiz at the age of 40. He used to fast even when he was 70 years old. Sultan could not go to Hajj once in his life. He was worried that if he left the country, the conspiracy would start again. But Sultan Aurangzeb donated one of the two copies of the Koran, copied by his own hands to Baitullah, and the other to Masjid al-Nabawi. When he got old, he used to spin yarn and sell it secretly in the bazaar. You may be wondering. Why did he do this? One day, Sultan felt that his death was near and called his children. And he ordered them to bring the bag that was on the shelf. When they opened the bag, there was some money. They asked their father what this money was for. Then Sultan Muhammad Alamgir said that he had spun yarn and sold it in the bazaar, and had collected the money from it, and this money was for the linen to shroud. The Sultan made a bequest. Buy linen for the shroud with this money. Do not build a mausoleum for me, do not take any money from the state treasury for the funeral, and donate the rest of my property to orphans. But when the Sultan died, people witnessed that he had only 300 rupees in his private treasury. Sultan Muhammad Alamgir died in 1707, he ruled the country for almost 50 years. And during his time the territory of the country expanded to the Himalayas and the borders of China. These areas included Afghanistan, Pakistan, Myanmar and Bangladesh.